Have you ever wondered why some drivers rarely have a problem backing into a parking spot, even if parallel parking is required? Or what about the driver who has to back up a long distance and does so in a near-perfect straight line, then stops in just the right place? And what about well-executed turns, whether left or right, performed with precision? You may be one of those drivers who seems to master every driving maneuver instinctively. If you are, the chances are great that you practice reference point driving without even being fully aware of it. This program is designed to explain reference point driving and demonstrate just how it works so that those of you who have difficulties with certain maneuvers will find driving easier. And those of you who don't have problems will be able to understand what you already do by instinct. What is a reference point? There are various points on a bus which, when lined up in a certain way, will provide a consistent reference that enables you to know just when to move, turn the wheel, or stop your bus. Just about any point on your bus can be used as a reference point. The front of the hood, the wheel well, the front, center, or back of the entrance door, the windshield center post, and predetermined spots on mirrors or other attachments to the body. Let's watch how a reference point is selected and how it works. Get some help to place one end of a tape measure at the front bumper of your bus and place the other end about 25 feet straight away from the front of the bus. Properly position yourself in the driver's seat and pick a spot along the edge of the hood of the bus as a reference point. If you drive a transit bus, select another reference point. For example, mark a spot on the windshield or dashboard and use that as your reference point. Have the other driver move a cone along the length of the tape measure to the point where the base of the cone lines up with your reference point on the edge of the hood. Take note of that measurement. For our purposes here, let's say the distance is 17 feet. It's important to take this measurement in your own bus, since the actual distance will depend on the model of bus and the height of each driver. In this case, our driver now knows that her reference point is 17 feet away. Now what good does it do to know this? Suppose that regulations require that you stop your bus 15 feet from a railroad track. Using her reference point, this driver knows that if she stops with her over-the-hood reference point of her bus lined up with the first rail, she is 17 feet from the railroad tracks. Since this distance remains constant, you never have to make allowances for depth perception differences. However, when you approach a crossing, you must be certain there is sufficient room on the other side for your bus to clear the tracks should you have to stop for traffic or a red light. Remember, if your depth perception is off by 20%, you can misjudge the space by as much as 7 feet if you are driving a 35-foot bus. Don't cross the tracks unless you are confident you have a margin of safety. The key to reference point driving is to know your vehicle so well that you and it become one. One way is to use a numbering system for your mirrors. Why number the mirrors? During training, you may be asked to look in your left mirror. How many left mirrors does your bus have? In different school districts, buses may have four, six, or more outside mirrors. On a seven-mirror bus, you would number outside mirrors from one to six. One left side, two left front, three left crossover, four right crossover, five right front, six right side mirror, and seven inside rear view mirror. In this program, we use a five mirror setup. Let's compare it with the seven mirrors just seen. One, left side, two, left front and left crossover, three, right crossover and right front, four, right side, and five, inside rear view mirror. As you can see, the banana-shaped mirrors provide both an extensive side view and a fine crossover view. No matter how many mirrors your bus has, number them from left to right in the order in which they are mounted, with the left side mirror being number one and the rear view inside mirror always numbered last. Because of the many differences in mirror configurations, in this program we refer to the mirrors by their names, but once you begin to practice these procedures, you'll find a numbering system to be invaluable. Backing up. 
Backing up is a maneuver which is greatly affected by depth perception. Place a cone about 50 feet behind the bus to represent an obstacle, perhaps another vehicle or a wall. Try to back the bus until the left rear bumper is about one foot from the base of the cone. If your depth perception is off 20%, you may knock over the cone or you may stop about two feet too soon. Using a reference point will compensate for this perception difficulty. Place a cone one foot from the left rear bumper of your bus. Then place a coin directly under the edge of your bumper. Sit comfortably in your seat with the seat properly adjusted and your safety belt on. Have someone mark the spot where you see the base of the cone in your left side mirror. Now, have two helpers stretch a string from the spot marked on the left side mirror to the base of the cone. Sitting upright in the driver's seat, and it's most important you don't move from side to side, look into the side mirror and sight down the string along the body of the bus. Find the spot where the string lines up with an identifiable feature on the body and the base of the cone. In this case, it's the bottom rear of the wheel well. This is a reference point for backing. Remove the mark on the mirror. Watching your reference point in the left side mirror, pull your bus forward about 20 feet. You'll see that the reference point and the base of the cone move apart. Then back up slowly, watching the left side mirror. Don't shift your body. Simply turn your head to look in the mirror. When the reference point and base of the cone are about to line up again, ease to a stop. The back bumper should be right over the coin where you placed it one foot from the cone. If you're off a bit, think about why. Did you shift in your seat? Remember, an inch of movement here can put you off a foot or more here. With practice, you'll learn to use this reference point to improve your performance. Since not all obstacles can be seen in your left mirror, repeat this process with the cone on the right side of the bus. Learn your reference point and practice, practice, practice until you get it perfected. Serpentine. If you've ever attended a bus rodeo, you may have wondered how the contestants mastered this exercise known as the serpentine. While a lot of practice goes into it, knowing the pivot point on your bus and using reference points makes it a lot easier. And it isn't just a game. You learn about control, steering, braking, mirror use, and more. And you'll use these maneuvers when driving in a parking lot or another congested area. Pivot point. When you make a turn in a vehicle, the front wheels turn instantly. But the back wheels must travel some distance before they change direction. The point at which this direction change begins is called the pivot point. When traveling forward, this point will be somewhere forward of the rear axle. When moving backward, this point will be somewhere behind the rear axle. Each vehicle is different, so you'll need to determine your own bus's pivot point. Set up one cone. Drive by slowly one foot to the right of the cone. When you see in your left side mirror that the cone is about three feet forward of the rear axle, make a fast, hard left turn. If you hit the cone, your pivot point is closer to the axle. If the wheels move far out from the cone during the turn, your pivot point is farther forward of the axle. Knowing the pivot points of your bus will help you to execute driving maneuvers effectively, including the serpentine exercise, as we are about to demonstrate. Start with three cones set up with a distance between them six feet longer than your bus. You will use three reference points here. Your front bumper, the front edge of your hood, and your pivot point. Line up your bus parallel and about one foot to the right of the line of cones. Move straight ahead slowly. Watch for the first cone in your right and left crossover mirrors. When the first cone is visible in your left side mirror, Begin to watch for your hood reference point to line up with the base of the second cone. When it does, turn the steering wheel quickly all the way to the left. Watch for the second cone in your left crossover mirror. When your front bumper is parallel to this cone, straighten your wheels and begin to come around, moving forward slowly. Watch for the second cone in your right crossover mirror and your right side mirror 
and adjust direction if necessary to bring your bus in a parallel line about one foot away from the second cone. Watch in your right side mirror for the second cone to come parallel to your pivot point and make a hard right, turning the wheel as quickly as possible. When the bumper lines up with the third cone in your right crossover mirror, straighten the wheels and begin to come around, moving forward slowly. Watch in your left side mirror for the third cone to come parallel with your pivot point. When it does, turn the wheel to the left, monitoring the third cone in your left side mirror as you straighten out completely and move slowly forward on a parallel course past the cones. Now it's time to try the backward serpentine. Remember, your pivot point is behind the rear axle when you're moving backward. Use the method shown before to determine where the exact pivot point is on your bus before you begin this exercise. Back slowly along the right side and one foot from the first cone. Watch the cone in your left side mirror. When the first cone is even with your pivot point, turn the wheel hard to the left. Continue backing slowly, keeping your wheel turned until the second cone comes into view in your right side mirrors. Straighten out the wheels and move back slowly, adjusting until you are on a parallel course about one foot from the second cone. Wash in your right side mirror until the second cone comes even with your pivot point. Check your right crossover mirror to be sure that the front bumper will clear the first cone. Then turn your wheel hard to the right. Continue backing slowly, watching for the third cone to come into view in your left side mirrors. Keep the wheel turned until you see you are on a parallel course about one foot from the third cone. Watch in your left side mirror until the third cone is even with your pivot point. Turn the wheel left. Monitor the third cone in your left crossover and left side mirrors, adjusting until you are on a parallel course past the cones. What have you learned from these demonstrations? You've learned mirror use, control, steering, reference points, and how the pivot point principle works. And with practice, you can learn how to maneuver in tight spots. Lane Position As a professional driver, you must be able to keep your vehicle parallel to the curb or centered in a lane under all kinds of conditions even when it's dark or too foggy to see the whole road clearly. This section will show you how to use personal reference points and mirrors to maintain your position on the road accurately. Position your bus about one foot from a curb or lane marker. With the seat properly adjusted and your safety belt on, sight down a string stretched diagonally from the center of the leading edge of the hood to the edge of the road. Have the person holding the string Move it up or back until it is just within your view. Then sight down the string to the point where it crosses the leading edge of the hood. This is your edge of the road reference point. When the edge of the road and this point meet, your bus is one foot from the edge of the road. Repeat this procedure on the left side of your bus with the string running from the center of the leading edge of the hood to the center line of the road. When the holder's hand comes into view just over the front of the hood, Sight down the string once again to see where it crosses the front of the bus. This point, whether on the hood, in line with the mirror, or with some other object, is your reference point to the center line. By using these reference points, you can always tell exactly where your bus is positioned in relation to the lane in which you are traveling. Backing into a stall. First, let's find the reference points necessary to do this procedure. When you make a hard turn in one direction, an opposite reaction takes place at the rear of your vehicle. This is referred to as tail swing. The tail swing of vehicles differs according to the distance from the rear axle to the rear bumper. For example, the tail swing of a 35-foot bus can be at least 18 inches. Once you're familiar with your vehicle's tail swing, you can practice backing into a stall. These cones are set up to simulate the entrance to a parking stall between two vehicles. We'll call them cone A and cone B. This line of cones represents a wall, a fence, or other obstacle. By using reference points and following some specific procedures, 
you can back into a stall from either direction on the first attempt with a minimum of effort. Approach the stall slowly, about three to five miles per hour. Use your hood reference point to position your bus one foot to the left of the cones. Monitor your right side mirrors closely. When cone B is parallel to the right front wheel, come to a complete stop. Put the transmission in neutral, set the parking brake, and take your foot off the brake. Now turn the steering wheel all the way to the left. With your foot on the brake, put the transmission in gear and release the parking brake. Move forward slowly toward the line of cones, glancing at your right side mirrors to be sure the tail swing of your vehicle does not make contact with cone A. Using the crossover mirrors, bring the front bumper within about three inches of the front cones. Stop. Put the transmission in neutral, set the parking brake, and take your foot off the brake pedal. Then turn the wheels all the way to the right. Again, with your foot on the brake, put the transmission in reverse, release the parking brake, and slowly back up toward the stall. Watch the left side mirrors to be sure you are clearing cone A. Monitor cone B in your right side mirror. Straighten the wheels as you move slowly back into the stall. Using the reference point you learned earlier, bring the bus to a stop one foot from the wall. Let's suppose that the procedure didn't work, that you had to maneuver up and back once or twice to get lined up straight with the stall. This simply means that you have to change the first reference point when you bring the bus to a stop parallel to cone B. There are minor differences in the turning radius on buses, even those of the same make and model. You simply need to experiment to determine just where cone B should be in relation to your bus before you stop. This driving hint may also help. Normal driving position for your hands is 10 and 2 or 9 and 3, depending on your district's policy. This gives you the greatest control of the steering wheel for daily driving. But there is a simple way to keep your vehicle moving in a straight line when you're doing maneuvers that require short forward, or as we'll be doing here, short backward movement. With the wheel straight, mark the 12 o'clock position on your steering wheel. Place one hand on the wheel at this spot, either your right or left hand, depending on which is more comfortable. Using a curb or line as a marker, begin to move your bus backwards slowly for about 500 feet. Note how little movement of the wheel from the 12 o'clock position it takes to keep parallel to the line. This procedure is successful every time because when you bring the mark on your wheel back to the 12 o'clock position, you know that your wheels are straight. And that means you'll be moving in a straight line. Driving out of a stall. Once you've mastered backing into a stall with precision, you can practice driving out of a stall. Move forward slowly, monitoring the cones in your crossover and side mirrors. Find cone B in your right side mirror. When cone B is parallel with your forward moving pivot point, turn your wheel hard to the right. Continue forward slowly, watching your right and left side mirrors. In the right side mirrors, check to be sure you are clearing cone B. In the left side mirrors, check to be sure the left rear tail swing does not hit cone A. Continue moving forward slowly in the hard right turn, checking your crossover mirrors to make sure you clear the front barrier. Once you clear cones A and B, straighten out the wheels and move into your lane. If corrections are needed, try again, adjusting your pivot point to account for the tail swing. Only practice will help you find your reference points. It's important to stop and secure the bus each time before turning the wheel. If you turn the wheels as the bus is moving, you're using up some of the distance you have to make the maneuver. But if you turn your wheel completely while the bus is stopped, you'll make a more precise turn. Even though you may think this will take more time than parking on the fly, you'll find this isn't true once you have mastered these procedures. Parallel parking. Cones representing other vehicles are set up one bus length plus seven feet apart. Use your right over the hood reference point to get your bus lined up one foot out from the left side of the cones. 
Watch in your right side mirror to see when the second line of cones is parallel to your vehicle's backing pivot point. Stop, secure the bus, and turn the wheels all the way to the right. Before moving back, check your left side mirrors to be sure there are no pedestrians or traffic behind you. Put your foot on the brake, shift in the reverse, release the parking brake, and move back slowly. Watch your left side mirror. When you see the opening between the rear barrier and the curb, stop. Secure the bus and straighten the wheels. With your foot on the brake, shift in the reverse and release the parking brake. Watch the right mirror as you slowly back up. When the right rear bumper reaches the curb line, stop, secure the bus, and turn the wheels hard to the left. With your foot on the brake, shift in the reverse and release the parking brake. Start backing slowly, watching the crossover mirrors to be sure the front bumper will clear the barrier. Begin to straighten the wheels using your right side mirrors to help you come parallel to the curb. Use your left side mirror and your rear reference point to stop your bus one foot from the rear barrier. If you are ever in doubt about where you are when backing, secure the vehicle and get out and look. That's better than hitting something. But once you master this procedure, you'll park your bus or even your car with minimal effort. To pull out of a parallel parking spot, first check all your mirrors to see if your pathway is clear of traffic and pedestrians. With the vehicle secure, turn your wheel hard left. When it is safe, pull out slowly, watching ahead and in your left crossover mirror to be sure you clear the barrier in front of you. Monitor your right side mirrors to be sure your tail swing is not hitting anything along the right beside you. When the rear axle is directly opposite the front barrier, straighten out your bus and move into your lane of traffic. When performing any of these procedures while driving your route, remember that you are sharing the road with other vehicles. Use turn signals and other means such as honking your horn when backing up if your district requires it to let other drivers know what you are planning to do and always check in your mirrors to make sure your path is clear before you move. Overhead clearance. Though it probably won't happen often, at some time you may have to drive your bus under an unfamiliar overhead obstruction. When the occasion arises, it's a good thing to know the limits of your bus so you don't leave the roof vents on the pavement behind you. There's a simple method to determine clearance using reference points. You'll need a measurement from the ground to the roof of your bus, including anything on the roof such as vents or lights. And you'll need access to an overhead door or some other overhead obstruction you can adjust. Measure an opening from the ground to a point one foot higher than the measured height of your bus. This allows for any uneven pavement that might use up your clearance space. Drive your bus up to the overhead obstruction. Sitting with your seat properly adjusted and your safety belt on, line up your over the hood reference point with the base of the overhead obstruction. Secure your bus. Now have someone move a pen or pencil down the windshield, stopping when the pen and the overhead obstruction line up in your view. Mark this spot. A small piece of tape on the windshield post will work fine as a permanent record. This is your reference point. Anything above your reference point is safe to go under. If the obstruction is below your reference point, better to find another route than risk an accident. Turns. According to statistics, right turns are one of the most frequent causes of school bus accidents. Accident number one will happen if you turn the bus too soon and hit the curb, or a light post, or a pedestrian waiting at the corner. Accident number two will happen if you turn the bus too late. Your arc will be too wide and you'll swing too far out into the oncoming traffic lane. Accident number three will happen if you don't account for the tail swing of your bus. And accident number four will happen if you have not positioned your bus close enough to the curb line to prevent a car or other vehicle from passing on the right. Once again, knowing your bus and establishing reference points can help prevent accidents. The most common right-hand turn in urban areas is the curved corner.
To make this turn with minimal problems, approach the corner at five miles per hour. Use your over the hood reference point and your right crossover and right side mirror to position the bus parallel to and three feet from the roadside or curb. As you approach the corner, imagine a line that crosses in front of you from the curb on the road onto which you are turning. When your front bumper reaches this line, make a quick hard right turn. Then straighten out, allowing the wheels to come back in line parallel to the curb of the new road. Come to a complete stop and check. You should be about three feet from the curb. Practice this maneuver until you achieve the desired results. Because of the differences in the turning radius of various buses, you may have to adjust your turning reference point to somewhere behind the bumper, perhaps the front of the wheel well or center of the wheel. Use your mirrors to determine when you have reached the exact reference point for your bus. A perfect right turn onto a narrow roadway may still cause a problem because your bus may swing into the oncoming traffic lane. This is not a problem unless there is traffic in that lane. But once again, a reference point will help you to prevent problems. Approach the corner at five miles per hour and execute your turn. Have someone in the intersection with a cone to mark the extreme outer edge of your arc of travel or the point where the left front bumper of your bus intruded into the oncoming traffic lane. With this point established, move your bus into turning position, lining up your pre-established reference point as you did before, in line with the curb on the roadway into which you will turn. Now sight the cone which was placed to identify the turning arc of your bus. Draw a line on the windshield even with the base of the cone. This becomes your reference point. Any vehicle in your view with its left front tire below this point is in your line of travel. Don't make the turn until the oncoming traffic lane is clear. It's just that simple. This reference point only works if you follow one important rule. Keep your turning speed at a consistent five miles per hour. If you make your turn on the fly or faster than five miles per hour, your reference point will be off. The entire radius of the turn will change. You can see that going into the turn too fast is really asking for trouble. Reference points only work if your driving habits are consistent. In rural areas, a square right turn is often required. This kind of a turn requires a different turning reference point. It will be somewhere behind the bumper, perhaps at the wheel, the door, or even farther back. Since each bus is different, experiment to find the reference point for your bus. To properly execute a square turn, it may be necessary to start the turn farther from the curb closer to the center line. Always be sure to check right side mirrors carefully to be sure no vehicle comes up beside you on the right. Bicycles and motorcycles can be a particular problem since they can easily fit into the space you leave. Use your turn signals to alert drivers behind you of your intentions and monitor your side mirrors carefully before making your turn. If you must start to turn close to the center line, be aware of the tail swing of your bus which may carry over into the oncoming traffic lane. Each vehicle is different, but the tail swing of a 35-foot bus will be at least 18 inches, more than enough to make contact with an oncoming vehicle. With proper use of reference points and mirrors, there is no reason to have accidents when making right turns. Practice these procedures until you become a true expert. Left turns will usually be easier than right turns, but reference points should still be used to make these turns correctly. Using your over-the-hood reference point, position your bus three feet from and parallel to the center line of your lane. Use turn signals to let other drivers know your intentions and monitor your mirrors for traffic around you. Begin your hard left turn when your turning reference point is even with the center line on the cross street. Once you have made your turn, Straighten out until you are parallel in your new traffic lane. As you make a left-hand turn, check your right side mirrors for right-turning traffic, which may be in danger of being hit by the tail swing of your bus. If you must stop for traffic, stop when the front bumper or your specific turning reference point is even with the center line in the cross street. Don't turn your wheels until you are ready to execute your turn, a good tip to follow in your personal car as well. That way, an impact from behind won't send you into the path of oncoming traffic. Just as with any other driving procedure, 
Left and right turns require constant monitoring of mirrors. You can never assume that all is well behind or beside your bus. Mirror use is one of the best precautions against collisions. It will take some time to find all the necessary reference points on your bus, and it'll take some practice to use them effectively, but it will be well worth your while. Take the time to learn about your bus and help make every trip a safe trip.